Yeah, okay, maybe take it out. <laughs> Did you know that two thirds of our clothes are literally made out of oil and gas? Here's how we fix it. So let's jump right into it. Let's jump right in. Hey guys, let's, let's jump right into it. Oh yeah, I guess this is the first episode. So before we jump right into it, I should explain myself. I'm your host, Hazel, and you know I'm very chill and down to earth because this show has a swear word in the title. Here at Unfucking the Planet, we're going to talk real life, actual solutions to the climate crisis and what we as a species and you can do about it. Yes, even you. I'm looking at you, Tim, Tim Montrose. Tim Montrose, 945 Pico Street. First off, how humanity can cut our oil addiction. That's right, the brightest minds in politics haven't quite been able to figure it out yet, but that's because they haven't asked me, a TikToker with a bachelor's degree. So let's cut through the BS and figure out how to end this extremely slow and boring apocalypse. Welcome to Unfucking the Planet. <coughs> Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so, so excited to do a sponsored unboxing. Thank you to our latest sponsor. Oh my gosh, would you look at this haul? I can't even lift it. Let's see what's inside. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Run, don't walk to pick this up and don't forget to use my coupon code PETROMOMMY at checkout. Oil runs our cars, our houses, and also our governments. And it's in almost everything we wear. But how is that possible? This is a solid, oil's a liquid. How, how does that work? Actually, what we're wearing is finely woven threads of plastic, or synthetic fibers if you want to be polite about it. It's polyvinyl chloride, so your vegan leather. Elastic, so your tidy whities Nylon and spandex, so the yoga pants specifically engineered to make your ass look round. Polyamide, microfibers, and polyester, so basically everything you own. These fibers are made by refining polymers found in either natural gas or petroleum into acrylic pellets, then extruding those pellets into tiny, flexible plastic fibers. Gross, or is it fabulous? Oh, and here comes Chantal in a sharp little outfit that's part fossilized dinosaur, part processed petrochemicals, and 100% RAR. Formal wear meets Tupperware in this skin suffocating sheath that is completely timeless, in that it'll be here literally forever. So the answer is to stop throwing these things out, right? Well, how's that working out for us? So you donate your clothes. Good for you. About 85% of all textiles either end up in the dump or burned, or they're donated as scrap to a developing country, who in turn will either likely throw them in their own dump or burn them. We might as well save on the transportation costs and just do it ourselves. Okay, don't, don't do that. In fact, in Ghana, these giant cliffs of compressed used clothes are known as dead white man's clothes because the only reason anyone would throw out these huge amounts of clothes would be if they died. But all those plastic clothes that you environmentalists love wearing. Oh my God, so when I was doing research for this, that was their favorite argument was like, oh yeah, she says she hates oil while she's wearing oil. <laughs> Checkmate, environmentalists. But at least plastic is recyclable. <laughs> So yes, some clothes are made from recycled plastic, but those are like water bottles, not other clothes. A pathetic amount of clothing is recycled, and that's because the majority of fabrics are blends of different fibers. You try taking the banana out of your banana smoothie and making banana bread with that. Oh, that's a, that's a popular TikTok recipe? Yeah, that, that makes sense. So why aren't there more clothes that are either made from recycling or recyclable? Yeah, well, why would they make those kinds of clothes if nobody wants to buy those kinds of clothes? The demand just isn't there. That and it's literally more expensive to use recycled materials. So the only reason these companies would ever consider using even the most minuscule amount of recycled plastic is so they can plaster, no. I used to be a plastic bottle on the shirt. The plastic in the dump isn't the only problem. A lot of that plastic actually ends up in the ocean, either from discarded clothes or from your laundry machine. On some coasts, acrylic fabric makes up up to 85% of all trash on the beach and around 30% of all of the microplastics everywhere. And then after the microplastics go into our water supply and oceans, what happens to it? We eat it. 
before synthetic fibers, fashion was slow. All our clothes were made from plant and animal-based fibers like cotton, wool, silk, or leather. Clothes were more expensive and people bought way, way less of it. <laughs> when fashion influencers bragged about their followers, they were talking about sheep. And it was not considered a disposable good. If it rips, you get that <laughs> fixed. If your weight changes, you get that <laughs> tailored. If you die, bummer, you put that <laughs> in your will. But then came nylon and the rise of the synthetic fabric. Now you could blame the rise of these plasticky clothes on the oil industry or capitalism. You could, but you've seen my hair. I'm gonna blame the patriarchy. Dateline, April 1939. Days are getting longer, skirts are getting shorter, and the talk of the New York's World Fair is the DuPont Corporation's sensational new wonder fabric, nylon. This little miracle could be fashioned into stockings, allowing America's lovely ladies to cover the unsightly spectacle of their hairy legs without using garters. Wow. Hubba hubba. See that, boys? That's what you're fighting for. And fighting is the key word here. Once Japan and the US went to war, the military needed silk for things like parachutes, and 90% of silk came from Japan. Nylon came to the rescue, and women had to resort to, get this, shaving their legs. <gasps> when the war ended, there were actual nylon riots as demand skyrocketed, and nylon became an absolute necessity for the military and fashion industries. Oh, but we had to keep shaving our legs too, because reasons. Thanks, patriarchy. After that, the popularity of these petroleum-based miracle fabrics really exploded in the 80s. That's right, ladies, polyester was 50 when he finally hit his stride, truly the dilf of the fabric world. Even though it was less durable, nobody cared because it was disgustingly cheap to make. And suddenly, clothing went from a durable good like a house or a car to more of a disposable good like a paper bag or machine gun Kelly. By cranking out clothes by the ton, the fast fashion industry has become a polluting giant, emitting around 8% of all of the CO2 emissions everywhere. That's about the same amount as all 27 countries in the EU. To put that into perspective, that's more than uh, Spain, Germany, France, um, the rest of them. And that's not even before we count the emissions from shipping or from those clothes rotting in landfills or being burned. In fact, around 70 million barrels of oil a year are used to produce the clothes that you and I buy, wear maybe a few times, and then throw out. Because, like, cow print? What was I thinking? I'm not saying you have to buy only natural, hemp-based clothes that were personally blessed by Al Gore. Polyester can be durable and inexpensive, so we can clothe a lot of people. But at the moment, the good stuff is rare, and what's out there is mostly cheap, disposable stuff. So we can clothe everybody cheaply and keep those clothes for years and years. But do we? No! We go through clothes faster than Pete Davidson goes through women out of his league. We buy more clothes than ever and throw them out faster than ever. A 2015 survey showed that garments are worn an average of seven times total, which is how many times a week I wear this bra, which I absolutely do plan on putting in my will, but not as a gift, more like a generational curse. Yeah. So first up, the science, which I, the holder of a Bachelor of Arts degree, am extremely qualified to lecture you in. First, we can invest in more recyclable and eco-friendly materials. Circular fashion is like recycling. They repurpose fabric from scraps and leftovers that can't be recycled any other way. Loads of companies are investing in things like sustainable dyes, creating new and more recyclable and sustainable fabrics, and figuring out how to make things more circular. Anyway, this is good, and we can hope that companies do this out of the goodness of their own little hearts, and we can try to find the most sustainable brands, but a lot of the time it's hard to tell if these brands being eco, green, conscious, ethical, sustainable, whatever, are BSing you or not. This is not your fault. It's okay, I still love you. It's hard to know which brands are actually responsible all throughout their supply chains, and that's because the supply chains behind these fashion giants have gotten so convoluted and labyrinthine, it would make Kafka go, geez, that's dark. So before we make, like, laws, we need to make fashion companies track and report what's going on in their supply chains, even if they'd rather not. Especially if they'd rather not. Due diligence legislation forces companies to track and report their clothes from the distribution to the landfill. You see, it's not, I don't know, Shein? Shein? Sheen? Shine? Shein? 
nobody knows how to pronounce this, making the decision to produce tons and tons of plastic clothes in sweatshops and then throw them away, a lot of the times they just contract that out to the lawless, wild, wild west of the fashion world, subcontractors. Yeehaw! Once we can track all of this, it makes it a lot easier to tell everyone involved, hey, 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 knock it off, hey, no human rights abuses. Who's a good subcontractor? Who's a good subcontractor? Next, we're talking polluter pays laws or extended producer responsibility. Plastic and greenhouse gas pollution costs money, both in things we can't really measure, like disasters from climate change, and from things we can, like how much it costs to clean up or recycle all of their messes. And who is paying for that? Usually either we the taxpayers are, or developing countries are. And it's pretty hard to develop when people keep tossing their hot topic My Hero Academia shirts into a dumpster fire in your backyard. A dumpster fire that's grown by 42,980 pounds per minute since you started watching this video. <coughs> by using taxes, Ew. carbon pricing, and levies on clothing to help pay for cleanup and recycling efforts, we can bully companies into more sustainable practices by making sustainable practices literally just the cheapest option. That's right, kids, bullying works. But even though retail chains might be struggling to become responsible, they do a great job at claiming to be responsible. Think about it, no company is gonna choose to be sustainable if they can just slap a leaf on their tag, say, made with 1%, recycled fibers make 10 zillion dollars and call it a day. We need to make them step up. Yeah, good luck getting any meaningful legislation passed in current year. Well, right now the EU is working on an absolute banger of a fashion act <laughs> that makes it way harder for companies to hide their horrible fashion crimes. No, not those, like human rights abuses. Way less sexy. And now that they're doing it in Europe, of course they're doing it in New York and California, which is pretty much the definition of fashion, right? So what can you, the guy who's not the CEO of Zara or the president of the world, do about it? After you get done with your weekly speed dial to your local representatives about due diligence legislation, of course. Yeah, you can, uh, you can buy secondhand, you can buy things that last longer, you can try to buy from sustainable companies if you can afford it, fix up the stuff you have, you know all this. All roads lead to just one thing. Buy less shit. We've been told constantly, especially women, that buying things is self-care. It's a hobby, an activity, a personality trait. Buying non-stop all the time is what makes you fashionable. I know, I have TikTok too. Everything here is linked in my bio, at Petromami. We're all brainwashed into that constant need for the fleeting hit of dopamine that hitting that buy for 249 with Klarna button gives you. Break the cycle, man! Get that fleeting hit of dopamine from finding a real good vintage sweater at your local nonprofit or like, I don't know, you ever had fresh strawberries from the farmer's market? Oh my god, thrifting and farmer's markets. Am I, am I old? No. This is just cottage core. I'm just cottage core. What? This isn't a shawl? It's a, it's a, it's a sleeveless shrug. Cut this. The reason all of our clothes are cheap plastic made in sweatshops is because A, those companies are not regulated, and B, we just can't stop buying the stuff. But sadly, it doesn't matter what you or I environmentalists buy if the majority of people care more about being hip and fashionable than, you know, ethics. So, what do we need to do? Make fast fashion cringe. Make fast fashion cringe because it is cringe, dude. Monthly Shein hauls? Cringe. Always having the latest micro trendiest clothes? Cringe. Yikes. That was made by kids, dude. You cool with that? You want some Scrooge McDuck boss from Oliver Twist ass trip? You into that crappy plastic stuff on your body like some bargain basement Halloween superhero in a skin suffocating ensemble from the house of Ziploc? <gasps> cringe. Wow, we sure learned a lot today. If you like what you saw and want to see more, smash that subscribe button, smash that notification button, smash that like button, smash that share button, smash that comment button. Am I missing any? I think that's it. <laughs>